everyone, it's Raid Kitty, and I'm here with my Raid Kitty S'mores. So come on, let's play. All right. So I just opened up our Skyline 6 save, and I have to say I am so excited to get my hands on this and work some magic. But I've just been looking around, and I have to say Cities by Steven, Joy Build Cities, and Shukaboa did a phenomenal job getting Murado off the ground. And I want to give a special shout out to this beautiful map by Karina because oh my goodness, look at his beauty. Oh, all right. Well, I am itching to get started, but before I get started, let's take a look at some highlights from the last three weeks. I'm going to name it. Kevin's Landing. Now, why Kevin's Landing? Well, Kevin is my dog, and he's very cute. And I thought I should name the town after him. I am really happy with how Skyline Park came together. I think it feels like a small town park. We do have the park plaza, which is something that I use the trees to kind of encapsulate it and try to make it feel like a special part of the park. I think I'll name it Tambert Bournay. Gotta say it with a French Canadian flair for Stephen, eh? First three members of the crew, everybody. So to start my turn, I'm actually gonna move this water tower up to the hill. Thanks to uh, Jemzin, I knew that he would be giving me a hard time if I did not. The next thing I'm gonna do is upgrade all of these dirt roads. I did talk with Joy to let her know that I may be removing some of the detailing, but that I would be sure to put it right back. Now, just like Snapdragon Cities, I'm going to become a master of time, and the roads are done. Now, in all of my haste, I broke rule number one. Thou shalt not play a cat in chess. No, wait. Um, thou shalt... Anyway, I accidentally destroyed something controversial. Something sacred. Something trusted. Chickaboa, I'm so sorry. Please don't haunt me. My goal for this episode is to create a swap meet. Now where I grew up, the swap meet was a place to sell secondhand goods as well as local and organic produce. So my goal here is to create the same thing. It's going to be a swap meet surrounded by two neighborhoods, both of which I will be zoning with organic and local produce as well as self-sufficient housing. So let's go ahead and get started by building out the road network for our first neighborhood. Now let's go ahead and remove these trees because if you don't remove them, your game might lag because all of Vanilla City Skylines does is hide them. It doesn't actually remove the trees. Next thing I'm gonna do, like I mentioned, is zone this district with self-sufficient housing as well as local and organic produce. This is going to allow me to get the types of buildings I want when I create the swap meet. Next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and create the exterior road network on the second part of my neighborhood, as well as including an interior road network for the swap meet. I am not a huge fan of vanilla building for many reasons, one of which is I can never get my roads just right, but that's okay. I guess practice eventually, hopefully, will make perfect. Also, I deleted some of these really nice rocks when I was laying the road network, so let's go ahead and fix those. Sorry, rocks. Now let's go ahead and name our park. I'm gonna name it Wooders Market, and then we're gonna create a Wooders Bay. And these are gonna be our park, or our swap meet, and our neighborhood. Now let's create the interior roads. Interior roads are going to focus primarily on having a center area where the schools and the services are going to be located and all of the buildings are going to be located on the outside. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this semi-gridded layout, so let's keep going. Here I'm starting to add some services and we're going to add some schools as well. And I'm feeling like a public library might even be in order. Creating a public space for families and communities is really important. These places don't just work as um, 
their intended use. They're also places of gathering, potentially even places of worship or places of, um, you know, where, where you keep kids off the street, you keep families busy and you keep people together. And overall, I think that's pretty great. So I want to make these places feel extra special. Oh no, hold on. I didn't turn it off. The strike. Oh dear. Okay. Well, and we don't have any. Oh God. Okay. Well, I'm just going to keep going, but oh no. A meteor. <laughs> Oh god, and then, oh, okay, well, it's way over there, but still! Whoops! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, okay, gameplay. Use random disasters. Oh my god, and my frequency was at like 25%! Oh no! Well, crap. <laughs> well, we're gonna name this uh, raid's big mistake. Sorry. Okay, but back to detailing, and I'm gonna apologize ahead of time, or I guess about six minutes into this video, that this is going to be a very detail-heavy video because creating a sense of space and a sense of place for me involves tiny little details. It's the little things that really make this game come to life for me. So we're going to connect the paths up to the main road and I'm also going to add some foliage and some fences to really complete this feeling instead of just having a random path. And I'm going to create some non-district um, parks, places for families to gather, almost like a green belt or just as Joy said in her last episode, green space. Adding green space. Throughout the neighborhoods that I zoned, I'm creating these little intricate designs as well. Uh, designs that I'm very happy with. And now that we've gone ahead and detailed out the neighborhood, let's jump in and start working on the market. Now we're going to play some whack-a-mole here because I want the center of the market, unfortunately, to actually be parking lot because that's what I'm used to and that's what I grew up with. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna work on that. And so what I mean by playing whack-a-mole is I want very specific buildings in a very specific way. And because I don't have Rico or find it, I can't just plop them down. So we're going to place down the zoning and hope it grows in. One hour later. Yay! And we're all complete, which is great. It looks very sad, but that's okay. Now let's go ahead and place some gates around the outside entrances to the park. I, much like Joy, and many of the other builders are also on the free park gang, so I'll make sure that all of my entrances are at free cost. I'm also going to add some pathways because on the outside of this concrete jungle I've made in the interior of the market are going to be the little one by one fruit and veggie stalls. And much like the parking lot, I'm going to place them and play some whack-a-mole. Hold on moles, here I come. One eternity later. All right, this one took a lot longer than the parking lot, but it's done and it's looking really good. All right, let's put our detailing pants on and get going. I want to create this as a gathering place as well for families. So I'm going to make sure that there is lots of entertainment, lots of seating, lots of outdoor space for the whole family. Even though its primary function is going to be the buying and selling of goods, you don't just show up and then leave. You know, to drive there or to walk there is a whole affair. And if you're going with the whole family and only one person wants to shop, why not give them something else to do? 
Now to really bring this place to life, I'm going to be placing a lot of different kiosks around, most of which are informational kiosks where you can get maps to the locations and um, ideas of what different vendors are selling. I'm also going to place these little yakisoba noodle tents in the middle of the parking lot and add some details once again to bring this all to life. All right, that's looking pretty good, so let's keep going. I'm gonna add some more seating. I think it's really beneficial for there to be lots of seating for people. All right, well, the main infrastructure is looking really, really good. And uh, honestly, the main building is done. The rest is detailing. Not sorry, kind of sorry, not sorry. We're gonna place down some little pedestrian barriers or people barriers, line creators, whatever you want to call them. Some bathrooms, of course. And I'm gonna go around and again, put more signage. I really want people when they're here to know what they're doing. These signs may include hours and days that the market is going on. It may also be an event calendar of different things that are happening at this swap meet ground. Now over here, I'm going to place a one of the little pavilions or one of the, um, I don't quite remember the asset name, but I want to really incorporate it in with the trees that belong in the asset to really bring it together and give it a sense of place, which seems to be my phrase for the day, a sense of place. The next thing I'm going to do to integrate this swap meet and this grounds into the community is to add fencing around and behind the fencing is going to be different foliage, it's going to be bushes and trees to really give it again, a sense of place. I'm going to have to count how many times I've said that. Some type of phrase just gets stuck in your head, man. I don't know what to tell myself. Don't judge yourself too hard, me. In front of each of the vendors, I'm going to give them a sign that basically says what they sell and who it belongs to. I think when you're buying from local and organic places, it's important to know where the farmers are from and what they specialize in. And even though in this game, this is not what these signs are meant for, they're actually park welcome signs, I think that using different assets and different props for different purposes, I mean, it's part of having imagination, right? Here we're creating a little seating area and around each of these little shops, I'm creating more seating because if they're selling ready to eat goods, you want people to be able to sit and enjoy. I'm also going to use more of these yakisoba noodle tents as additional farmer's markets tents that I don't actually have to zone, which means upkeep cost is not a thing. I have a problem with empty space, uh, and even though I do believe in green space, for me, something about the vanilla grass just looks too plain. So I'm also going to add a carousel. It would not be a permanent fixture like you would think of at like a park. It would probably be more of one of those traveling, I don't want to say traveling circus, but like traveling fair rides that are portable, not permanent. And again, we're going to create a small area over here as a shopping area for more goods, uh, potentially even the company that is bringing the carousel along could be selling souvenirs. So while being next to the bathroom may not be the cleanliest or the least smelly option, I really want to highlight this vista here. And I also want to hide some of the tearing that the terraforming did. Even though I tried my best to keep the road aligned with the edge of terrain, 
there is still some tearing. Finally, one of the other things I really want to talk about, or I guess finally one of the last things I want to talk about, is how perfection sometimes causes a lack of realism. So occasionally you'll notice that I won't perfectly align something. In fact, skewing a picnic table is very natural because we as people move them around to use the space in a way that makes sense for us. A larger family might need two picnic tables. So I like to occasionally skew objects and not line them up perfectly, a scandal. Let's go ahead and add some finishing details around the park. More tents, more trees, more goodies, more detailing. As this episode comes to a close, I just want to thank each and every one of you for being here, not only for my episode, but for the rest of the Skyline 6 crew. This is our normal time, Sundays at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, so make sure you catch up on all of the episodes before mine at the playlist, both in the description and at the end of the video. If you're not subscribed to any of the crew, please do so. We are all amazing builders, and I think that you would enjoy it. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a like or subscribe so you can see more of my content. Next up is Valley Lad Gaming, and I am also oh excited to see what he can do, as well as Grattles, and then our first special guest. I hope all of you have a wonderful time, and on behalf of me and the crew for this plane, haha, get it, the crew, I wish you all a wonderful weekend.